Hi, it's Ruth here for Property Sisters, and we have got the amazing Maria Thompson. Now, Maria, um, she is absolutely incredible because she has got the hugest pipeline ever, but from naught to 25 million in two years. So she's going to explain a little bit about how she's managed to do that and a little bit about the mindset that you need in order to do it. But it's really valuable information. So over to you, Maria. Hi there, Ruth. Yes, I have an amazing pipeline. And the fabulous thing is all of the properties are beautiful. Um, I looked at my golden area and I chose Edinburgh, which is uh, extraordinary. It's the fastest selling properties uh, in the UK. And uh, one of my investors told me that the, the time, the average time for selling has increased or decreased from 21 days to 18. Um, so I decided that I had to change my life. Uh, I decided that property could change my life. And I decided um, property or pension and property was the way for me to go. Because I'm not in my first blush of youth, um, I went for commercial to residential because it was the fastest way for me to build a, a pot. And uh, the way that I did it, I think that anyone could do it. And uh, the one person who definitely had the same attitude as myself was you, Ruth. And that was just massive action we were determined. And I remember when you got your first deal, you thought that you had to have it. So you just went out and got it. Yes. And although there had been lots of other people going in and out of the lofts when it was um, an office and they were property developers, because it had that too late sign on it, they never thought of asking to buy. And uh, you and I totally were single-minded and we went after what we wanted. So it's a lot to do with mindset, isn't it? You know, I think yeah. it's, yeah, I, I, I think mindset, I work on my mindset uh, constantly. And uh, I think it's the most important thing. I think there's lots of people who hover from course to course. And, um, you know, they always look at the downsides. You know, you've just got to go for it. Because yeah. you're going to have to go for a lot. Yeah. I mean, the good thing I found is that because I'm not big with numbers, I'm more of a gut feel kind of person. I don't have to overanalyze something. You know, I can look at it and think, I can do something with that. I'm going to go for it. You know, I'm not saying that that is the right. That is right. That's why I team up with my sister to do the numbers. Um, but I'm more of a, you know, back of a fag packet. Does it work? Yeah, it does. Let's just do it. You know, the first the first deal that I got, um, my gut told me that this was a great deal. Which one was Everybody that? Else Which one was that? That, that was, was the, fish, the fish place. Yes, it was. It was Nemo's World, but yeah. it was shuttered, run down, and it had um, death written across it. And I didn't notice that. My gut told me this was a great deal. And uh, as we went into the build, we discovered it was actually part of a Georgian listed building. And the, the flats were just stunning. And it was used by our monitoring um, surveyor as a case study on uh, how to run a build. Having said that, they did think at the time that I was too passionate about it, I cared too much, which uh, I believe passion is is the only way to go uh, and, but gut as well yeah definitely and um what's i loved about nemo's world is that you managed to pay your investors back at some ridiculous amount of money um and this is yeah. so claire you and other investors that you had you paid them about 68 percent. was that right that's right yes see the thing is that we planning gain is my strategy and um, I believe, it, so we give our planning gain to our investors. So yeah. although we don't have permitted development prior approval in Scotland, 
So we have to go the planning route, which I think has been an advantage. Um, and then, you know, we buy it. And in, and in previous years, we were able to buy subject to planning, which is how I was able to do it without having a, an enormous amount of my own money. Where did so, you go from Nemo's? Which was your next project after Nemo's? Well, my next one was um, Sleepford House. Yeah. And um, then we've had Constitution Street, which uh, was hmm, difficult, difficult. And I had Constitution Street, which is an 1890s wine merchant's office in Leith. It's absolutely stunning. And um, what, what happened there was I had to go through four planning applications and then I had to appeal to the Scottish government. So I'd gone through pre-apps and getting consent from planning um, and then the council refused it. So that was, again, talking about our guts, it was gut-wrenching. And so I had to get a property to fill the void in my cash flow. So I, uh, I said to my daughter, find me something in Edinburgh with planning permission, which is impossible, but she didn't know that. And she phoned me up and she said, um, there's a church in Portobello with planning permission for four townhouses. So uh, as soon as I went in there, I, I called it my belter. And there's a Jerry Cinnamon song about she's a belter. And I used to always sing that. So again, I have an ability to see things that other people can't. It's not because they're ugly. It's like yourself with the loss. People believe it's not possible. So that there was really no one else interested in that until just before I was due to hand over the money. And I'd raised the money from Hong Kong and all over. And then at the last minute, my solicitor had fallen out of contract and uh, someone came in offering more money. So I had, to, I had, I had an overage on it. Um, which for people who don't know it's I put in for planning I was paying a certain um, I, was, I was paying um, I think 455,000 and then if I got planning permission for at least five houses um, although I put in for six I would up my price I would pay them a bonus to bring it up to 700,000 so someone came in at the last moment and just um, offered 700 so I had to raise the extra money in one weekend. And um, it's incredible. You just go completely in the zone. And I was in, on the phone to everyone and I just didn't stop until uh, the money was raised. No one thought that I could do it, but I could not bear the thought of all the work that we had done. Um, and I didn't stop until it was done, which again is um, mindset. Yeah. Um, and what I don't know if what you find is that more, the more that you do it, the more it's easier to raise the funds. The kind absolutely. of the more you get into the into the mindset of it. Um, yes. So that I mean that's quite interesting because I think often as as a newbie you just think oh there's so much against you you know you haven't got the funds you haven't got the property how are you going to do a commercial conversion but actually the first one's the hard one it is um, the hard one and then once you get into it you're on a roll but what you've you managed to is, is managed to build up something so huge in such a short space of time. I mean, that was never my goal to, to do yeah. so much because I just, for me, I can't, um, I didn't, I, I never thought that that was even possible, if you see what I mean. Because I hadn't thought yeah. about it, then it never was going to be possible for me to have that kind of pipeline. Um, and I suppose I'm uh, not risk averse, but I like to do things in, in smaller measures. So, you know, you can 
as a, doing commercial conversions, you can keep it small, can't you? Or you can go oh, for the oh. pipeline. You and don't that's... have to do that huge pipeline. No, and that's, uh, that's very viable just to do it small. The thing is that I think I've got four children and I think having one child is much harder because you're constantly looking at it and worrying. But it's yeah. having four, it's spread around. And it's the same with developments. There's always one that's just swinging along and going fantastically. The others are sort of rumbling along and then you've got one that's the problem child. And uh, I mean, I've got VAs in um, the Philippines and I've got two of my children working for us. I've got great project managers. I've built a, a huge team. So although I'm always saying me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's big, the royal me. It's husband. the royal, royal me. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but you need a big team. And um, my son's goal is that um, he intends that actually we'll be running like um, Deloitte or... Uh, KWP or whatever they are, <laughs> and that that we'll only deal with the, the challenges and not the day-to-day -day running of things. Uh, and that's why we're putting these systems in place now. Yeah. That's fantastic, Maria. We're out of time now, so we're going to say thank you very much. We're probably going to come back and do more on uh, commercial conversions and tap into some more specific knowledge of yours. Um, but I just wanted to say from everyone at Property Sisters, thank you ever so much. I put all the links to Maria below. So if you want to uh, find out more about what she does or her businesses, then you can catch her on Instagram and on her Facebook as well. Thank you, Ruth. It was a delight.